Now we never finished last week's video, so here's some more shitting on Matt. Ladies and gentlemen, I am the Sarcastic Bomb and welcome to this channel and welcome to another episode of Shitting on Matt. In last week's episode we finished off with whales on top of the mountains in the Andes. Fair enough, let's see what he's actually going to say about them though, because as we already discussed they don't really fit with his um, ideas. That can only be explained by Noah's Flood. Noah's Flood put those whales on the mountain and buried them in a catastrophic event. Uniformitarianism cannot explain this. When whales die, naturally they float to the surface, and scavengers will eat them, they'll get beached, crabs will come and eat the carcasses. The only way that you're going to get a perfectly preserved whale in nature is by catastrophism, once again, by Noah's Flood. No, see, the problem with the ones you're referring to, if, for example, you're uh, saying the Andes whales, is the fact there's multiple layers of these whales with other animals thrown in as well, ones that might live on beaches or near waterways. So that doesn't really fit with your thing. The also, um, these whales have been found belly up. So they did die at sea, they did float to the surface, they did then wash up on shore, but then got buried. So that could have been mud or on the edge of a river and the sediments come and help bury them. And they're not perfectly preserved. There is, on some of the fossils I've just had a look at, some evidence of gnawing on some of the bones. So this isn't a, oh, it suddenly happened overnight. No, no. The most probable, probable, the most probable cause um, they think is an algae bloom. So algae gets poisonous, the things eat the algae, poisons the waterways as well, fish and other things die. Sort of fitting, really. Um, but again, doesn't fit with your um, your time sort of frame on it because the last one was about 13,000 years ago. Um, isn't that about twice the age of the Earth, according to you? Oh, we're not doing very well with this video for you, are we? Especially on the top of mountains, it proves that while the continents were moving and the fountains of the deep broke open, as the Bible says, that certain of the crust of the Earth was subducted, causing catastrophic plate tectonics, and those mountains were pushed up and the whale fossils uh, were pushed up with them. The whales before they become fossilized. And remember, fossilization is not about time. Yes, it is. You definitely need time and a covering for it. Fossilization is simply about conditions. According to evolution, it takes 10,000 years at least to get a fossil to form. Yet we find fossilized teddy bears. We find fossilized flower bags. Oh dear, twisting the truth again, are we? Now we did Google for fossilized teddy bears, and it's actually what they're referring to, or what the first four creationist websites seem to be referring to, is the petrification of teddy bears, or sort of petrification of teddy bears, at Mother Shipton's Cave in Yorkshire, which has now gone on my we-need-to-go-there sort of list to go and see this, because that sounds quite funkily cool. Um, and what's actually happening is hard water is coming down and coating the objects in hard water basically so there's iron magnesium calcium carbonate and it's leaving a coating on them and if the item is porous it is sinking in covering the insides and they do have a collection of objects in there but the thing is if they're not porous the inside is still the inside it's just covered in a basic sort of thin stone mixture just imagine painting it for weeks and weeks and weeks well Three to five months, they said, painting it for three to five months with really, really thin layers of plaster. That's about it. It's not proper petrification. But petrification is a type of fossilization. But luckily, we can identify the different types of fossilization. So, no, not every fossil in the world is a, a petrified fossil. There are different types of fossils, which I'm not going to list, but if I remember rightly, there's about eight. You can get mold ones, carbon film ones, petrification ones, and that'll do ones because I can't remember the rest ones. But no, Matt, that's fossils, proper fossils, take time. 
that thing that Flat Earth doesn't have. Because otherwise we'd expect to find, oh, I don't know, maybe Roman things fossilised. They've had a few thousand years from the yearly ones. So, um, yeah. No. No, no, no. I'm going to say no a lot in this video, aren't I? Um, I even saw some fossilised sausage links. I mean, we continuously find these things that prove that fossilization is not about time. If it was about time, those sausage links would have deteriorated. Flower bags would have deteriorated. Teddy bear would have simply deteriorated. We even have a fossilized pickle in our creation museum. I had to Google for the fossilized pickle. <laughs> Can't believe I went and did that. And um, there's a site called the Lost Museum that uh, had it for a while or something. And they had a nice YouTube video of it saying, look, fossil, blah, 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 blah. Um, and someone did question it saying, has it ever been tested? Um, what process has it gone through? Blah, blah, blah. They wrote back and said, no, never been tested. Dr. Kent Hovind keeps it in his creationist museum, though. <laughs> so, I'm just going to call you a liar on that one straight away until someone can provide me with some evidence that that pickle has been tested and it's not some weirdly quick petrified one like the teddy bears and it is an actual fossilized pickle because that would just be amazingly funnily awesome. And also, why doesn't it happen all the time? So pickle in a jar with pickling spices and things like that. Yeah, why only that one pickle? Because there's only one. It's not the full jar's worth. Oh dear, Matt. These things will not last in the ground for 10,000 years waiting to be fossilized. Anybody that would say that fossilization is about time is just not educated on the topic. Fossilization is about conditions. And yeah, just the fact that people believe that fossilization takes up to 10,000 years and they'll use that as a crutch to disprove the Bible, it's ridiculous. Time and conditions. Time being the important one because you need time for those minerals and things to come into the fossil. Well, or to form the fossil. I don't get why this is such a problem for you. And we don't need fossilization to disprove the Bible for the age of the earth. All you actually have to do is go to things that have been, I don't know, alive for longer than that. Like certain trees or structures that have been about for longer than that. Or say you want to disprove the flood. Look at buildings that were built during when the flood was or before and after the flood and show a continuous level of habitation and things. You know, the, the simple sort of things there, Matt. We even find a fossilized ichthyosaur giving birth. Now, I don't know of any creature that takes 10,000 years to give birth to their young. I mean, if they did, that'd be a pretty painful birth. Or maybe while this ichthyosaur was giving birth to its three young, that one made it out, one may have died during while the mother died giving birth, and then that one fell on top of the others. And there you are with one dead baby underneath its mother, trapped, one inside its mother, and one halfway outside of its mother, getting buried and then fossilizing. We also have fossils of turtles having sex. Now I don't know about you, but if uh, the ground starts shaking and water starts rushing about and things, the last thing I'm gonna do is keep having sex. <laughs> Who am I kidding? How can I ever have sex? It's not that these fossils took 10,000 years to form. It's that they were buried in catastrophic conditions that allowed them to be protected. It's just like footprints. The reason that we even find fossilized footprints of any creature is because of catastrophism. If I was to go make a footprint in the beach or on some sand or on some mud, it's going to smooth out in just a few days. Or you could say, go to an area where it's muddy after, say, it's rained a lot. Leave some footprints there. Hopefully the sun comes out, dries that up. Your footprints sort of harden in that mud. If we're lucky, new sediment sort of goes and fills those sort of gaps and makes a new layer preserving your footprint underneath. <gasps> Who knew? You're confusing um, two different types of fossilization there though. The difference between the fossilizations of bones and imprints of things. So um, no, Matt, once again, no. You, you take the mix and oh, people who say time are obviously not educated on this. You're proving your lack of education on this wholeheartedly. If anything, is the one thing you've been honest about that people saying things show their fucking lack of understanding of it. That's what you're doing now. Wow. 
Catastrophism and Noah's Flood is the reason why these things even exist. I mean, when people argue against it, they're arguing against the very mechanism that even put those things there to begin with, the fossils that we're talking about. I mean, to even get a fossil, you have to have rapid burial. The only way that you're going to get that throughout the entire column is by Noah's Flood. It had to be catastrophic by the definition of what a fossil even is, or what the column even is. Now let's say we take your word for this and say that yes, Noah's Flood caused all fossils ever. Because it buried them all quickly. Um, we do run into a slight sort of problem there, don't we? That they, they should all be at the same layer. So that doesn't work for you again either. And also, these fossils have been buried by what? Water? Which strikes me as quite strange that they're just being in the water. Now, yes, in some areas we could understand that, yes, fossilization, all the water's coming and things like that, it is going to wash other sediments on as it's swirling round. But then, as we said in the last part, that sort of fecks you over when it comes to ones on top of mountains, because that shouldn't work for you. I mean, you want to say, oh, then the plate tectonics came and moved them there. So plate tectonics can suddenly move from the sea to the top of the earth really, really quickly, but no one's ever noticed? You, you, you are really, really grasping at straws for all of this and twisting anything to fit your House of Cards falling down narrative. And to be fair, it's quite pathetic. Just take the earth as being old. You can still have a god. I don't get how this is such a crux for you. It's fucking pathetic. Oh, am I going to do another one of these tonight? I probably won't do another one tonight because the time is getting on. And I've got our staff Christmas party for the pub to go out to. So I'm looking forward to that one. Um, I shall make some more videos along these. Because I am enjoying making them. Because Matt Powell is quite silly. Um, I hope you all enjoy making them. I've made like three. So uh, I have no idea. No, this is number four. God damn it. I have no idea if you're liking them. As I'm sat here making them. You better do. Because they're going out regardless. Now, thank you very much for watching this one. I'll see you on the next one. Don't forget to like, share, comment, subscribe down below. Good night. I'm a bad, the bad, the bad.